Welcome back to First at Four. Let's be honest, it has been an exhausting couple of days, actually probably a couple of weeks if we're getting technical. We're getting so much information about the coronavirus. Here to help us find the facts and cut down on the fear, Dr. Kevin Steffen, an infectious disease specialist, and Dr. Juliana Lidden, a therapist and a life coach. Good to see both of you. Good to be here. Good to be here. Uh, um, look, when we talk about coronavirus, COVID-19, obviously we know now that we've been kind of slogging through this for a couple of weeks, that there are vulnerable segments of the population. But from where you sit as an infectious disease specialist, is it fair to say that the vast majority of people, if they get it, will recover? That seems to be the, the consensus now. Is we've had enough time to study it in places where it had a head start. And so, for instance, in China, you know, large numbers of patients, and in, in, in Europe, large numbers, and we're just starting to you know, ramp up here. But uh, in those places, you know, the young, healthy people do well. 80% uh, make a complete recovery and have just a mild illness. And then uh, there's a very small percent, maybe 15% that get uh, a more severe disease. And then it's only about 5% that get really sick. Um, so yeah, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up uh, probably playing out similarly here. There's going to be groups that really can have a worse outcome of where they did get sick. But for most of us, I think uh, fear of it having, having, having it be a crippling illness is really just not. And, and how does that line up if you compare it to things like the flu, we all went through that H1N1 period and, and other diseases that spread rapidly across the globe. So I, I think that we're gonna end up finding that the, the mortality rate, the death rate from COVID-19 or coronavirus is, is a bit worse than influenza uh, compared to the usual seasonal influenza. That, most experts say that that kind of runs into about the 0.1 to 0.2%, so a tenth of a percent to two tenths of a percent for mortality, and it's maybe about a tenfold difference, but that's still about one or two percent, you know, for coronavirus. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that's gonna cluster in people who are, really have a weak immune system or are elderly. So again, for the younger people in the population, it's gonna be a lot less than that. Now, Juliana, of course, a lot of people, let's be honest, are scared. They're yeah. fearful. We see the stockpiling. I was just at Costco this morning, yeah. uh, just before 11 o'clock, lines 10 deep at least. All the shopping carts were all taken. I mean, it was a little chaotic. Mm -hmm. So what do you, what would you tell us to kind of keep things in perspective, keep the calm, not only for adults, but yes. for children, especially, yes. you know, mm -hmm. for somebody like me, I've got two yes. young kids right. who just turned six. The news is on in the morning. Right. They're surrounded by what is happening around us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're getting emails as parents from the school districts, wash your hands, cough into your, you know, your elbow, all of these precautionary measures. What do you tell yeah. parents, kids, adults? Well, panic is contagious, isn't it? And, and we're seeing this. So we can only control what we can. So it starts with us as the parent or the individual. And you're right, we do need to calm. We need to take a step back. We need to educate ourselves, right? Knowledge is power. But I'm finding people are getting obsessive. So they can't stop reading and listening and looking. And so it's creating that panic for ourselves and with our children. So it's really important we take a step back and start to kind of look at our own mental health, what we can do for ourselves, how we can create that calm and really step back and do that self-care and teach our kids how to do it right now. It's really important. Because we know that kids talk in school and they're going to hear things and rumors will start. And they're really scared. Yeah, yeah they yeah. are. More yeah. than adults probably. They really yeah. are. It starts with us, I tell you. And so if you are panicking as a parent, you really, maybe you need to talk to somebody, right? You can, you can go kind of share, but you really need to back that up and realize that it is you're putting that ripple effect out and your kids are going to start carrying that energy and they're going to be fearful too and right now we have got to remain calm um, I want to go to a viewer question uh, coming in at 602-444-1212 uh, be sure and ask your questions if you have them and then I just want to point out that um, at five o'clock the governor Ducey and uh, dr. Kara Christ head of the Arizona uh, Health Services will be here to also answer your questions this one says and and we've been receiving a lot of these women who are pregnant, worrying about wherever they are in their, in their term, what happens if they're exposed to coronavirus while they're pregnant? Uh, you know, the, unfortunately, the information we have available for what happens to uh, pregnant women is <clears throat> just starting to come out. And, and it hasn't been as published or hasn't been reported for us to look at and, and as scientists and as healthcare professionals to say, this is what's gonna happen. 
there were some in, in uh, Southeast Asia. There were some reports of some women going into preterm labor and having some smaller or lower birth weight babies and things like that. But that could be the stress of just getting sick. You know, mm -hmm. I I don't know that it's particular to the coronavirus and. Uh, uh, I, I think it's just wise to be careful if you're pregnant about being exposed to anything because you know your immune system isn't as strong when you're pregnant and so you're more susceptible to a lot of different infections. We have another question from one of our viewers, Cynthia Riggs from Gilbert. She says, we've been planning on going to Puerto Panasco for spring break or Rocky Point. Um, is this safe? Will we, be, will we be able to come back across the border in case travel from Mexico becomes suspended? But you know what, she echoes a lot of people. This is spring break time. This week, next week, and the following week. A lot of people are, whether they're you know going out of state, out of the country, flying. Do you have any words of advice? Should so, we not, or should they continue to live their life? So there's... The, cat, the, the risk that happens with travel uh, is largely being congregated in large groups, uh, being exposed to the respiratory secretions, the droplets, the sneezing, the coughing. Uh, some, some of that you can avoid, some you can't, especially if you're packed in like sardines on a plane or, or something like that. But you know, the hand hygiene uh, is still a, appropriate. The, the thing that got, has me the most worried is the large international flights because that channels people from a lot of countries that could be high risk, they could have been exposed and be in the incubation period and not be manifesting symptoms. So they're not presenting anything. And then, and then they abort on, on the plane and, and, and they could be exposing other people. Um, so I think that uh, it's hard for me to give exact advice, but I think it has to be tailored. And I think domestic flights that are short, you know, uh, commuter flights and things like that, as long as you do good hand hygiene, wash your hands and cover your cough and try to avoid being exposed to people who are actively sick. Uh, are probably safer, but it's a matter of dose response. And so the longer you're on a flight, the more likely you are going to get run down and get exposed to people. So uh, I, I had a family member ask me, actually, and they were going to Barcelona, Spain. And I said, you know, uh, Madrid has the, all the cluster of cases so far. Barcelona's on the coast, but, you know, who knows what's going to happen with international travel. And I advised her not to go. And then a couple days later, European travel yeah. was canceled. Mm -hmm. She would have been stuck there 30 days, mm -hmm. you know, had she gone, perhaps. You know, so I, 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 I just feel like it's a, such an evolving situation, but a common sense needs to prevail. And I would say long flights, international flights, really put a person at higher risk than the short domestic flights. All right, guys, stick around. We're going to come back to you in our next half hour.